I'm now joined by Matt Smith, our computing editor. Hello, Matt. Hi. Hello, Hi. Internet. Hello, Internets. Uh, thank you so much for joining us you know, and hopping in here today because I'm really excited about this subject. I know this is something, when it comes to computing, this is what I feel like everybody wants to have happen. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's one of those breakthrough sort of points where if quantum computers can break through the becoming like a somewhat mainstream thing, like it's really gonna just- It'll change the world. Yeah, yeah, it'll be extremely revolutionary. So a lot of people are excited and paying attention to it. Absolutely. Well, and I think maybe we should bring on our guest right now. So we have the Director of Software and Cloud Services for D-Wave. It is Murray Tom. Hello, Murray. Thanks for hopping in with us. Hi, Greg. Hi, Matt. Uh, thanks for having me on the, on the podcast. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for joining. You know, this is such an exciting um, subject. And I know we're going to talk about D-Wave as well and everything you're doing. Maybe for everybody watching, though, and I feel like this is one of the big things when it comes to quantum computing, is there a way to give a basic explanation to someone who may be familiar with the term but not familiar with how it works? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you're wondering, like, you know, what is a quantum computer, um, a good sort of base of reference is to think about the computers in our everyday life, like our laptops and our phones. And inside those devices are computer chips, which are doing all of the information processing for us. If we zoom down into the, like the fundamental building blocks of those computer chips, we have like transistors, which behave like light switches. And if you just change their behavior so that they can behave quantum mechanically, then uh, it's quantum mechanically in a way that reinforces the information processing you're trying to do, you've made a quantum computer that's different from all of the other computers on the planet. And so what would that actually look like? Would just, it would work a lot faster like it, when it comes to actual real world applications? Yeah, so if you think about it like, um, I was actually just on my walk in this morning, I was thinking about you know, that, um, that familiar uh, children's movie, Mary Poppins, you know how she has that purse and she basically pulls out like a lance and like an umbrella and all sorts of things out of her purse, like a large rug. Quantum memory has that kind of capacity. It seems very, very small, but it can store a large amount of information. So um, what quantum computers can do for us, particularly the commercial quantum computers we have right now, is that they can allow us to search enormous solution spaces and obtain answers quickly. So um, a lot of the customers we've been working with, when they're looking at putting this into applications like optimizing traffic flow or um, looking at doing um, material simulation or if they're doing like machine learning, sort of detecting uh, trees and, and images and things like that. What they're doing is they're, they're casting the problem they're trying to solve as like an energy landscape. And then they're using the quantum computers to find the, the lowest valley or valleys in those energy landscapes. And because the solution spaces are enormous, it takes a lot of compute power to find those lowest points. And, and that's how the quantum computer is helping in those applications. Wow. Yeah, that is, that is a, a pretty great explanation of why quantum computing is so powerful and that's why it's it's something that's very revolutionary because there are certain there are certain problems where we've kind of I don't know like there are certain problems where you hit a limit with a classical computer mm -hmm. and um, it's like this is it's, as far as you can push this it will, and it's something like maybe that problem is technically solvable but not in a time frame that is realistic like encryption is a classic example that you hear a lot where encryption kind of works by creating something that's not solvable within a realistic time frame. And then you can say, well, no one's going to crack that. Um, but quantum, you know, makes problems like that a lot easier because it can work um, so much more quickly. Um, now, I understand that one of the new things for D-Wave is a platform called Leap. Is that right, Murray? And yeah, that's right. So this is something that we've been hearing from a few companies in regards to quantum creating platforms where people can start to engage with um, using quantum computers and programming for quantum computers. So can you talk a little bit about Leap and, and what you're going for there? Absolutely. So we've designed Leap to be um, an environment for developers to come in and build and run their own quantum application. It provides them with immediate real-time access to one of our live quantum computers. And by uh, real time, I mean they can um, send instructions to the uh, quantum computer and get answers in seconds, rather than minutes or sort of at a scheduled time later in the week. Uh, it also brings together a lot of learning resources so that people can get access to the information that they need about how quantum computers work, 
what kind of problems are applicable to them, and then how do they go about programming, you know, starting with simple examples and building up from there. And in addition to that, it provides forums for developers to sort of form a community where they can um, learn from the community, but also bring their knowledge to the community and, and contribute to uh, the kinds of techniques uh, that people are trying so they can compound from each other's experience. So if someone wants to get started with something like that, with programming for one of your quantum computers, how do they get started? Like, where is the point of entry? Do they go on your website and download uh, um, an SDK, or, or how does that work? Yeah, so if they go to uh, dwavesys.com, um, there's a link to our, our cloud services to, to leave the, uh, the quantum application environment, and they can sign themselves up for it directly there. Um, once they've signed up by just providing a little bit of information about themselves, they'll see that they get immediate access to the quantum computer, a free minute for their first month. And they can go in and look at like uh, illustrated demos on types of problems that they can work on. There are also Jupyter Notebooks, which are sort of like interactive programming uh, lessons in their browser, so they can look through work examples and then modify the code and rerun it right in their browser. And when they're ready to build and run their own quantum application, then they can actually um, pip install in, with Python our uh, Ocean open source SDK, and they can basically begin building their own programs in Python uh, locally on their machine, and they can use the minute of access they have to actually sort of prototype their problems out and then run them on the quantum computer. And um, we've designed the system so that uh, for people who have that kind of interest level and, and want to start building those applications, um, they can either sort of take two paths. They can, um, as they build their quantum applications and they want to get more time on the quantum computer, they can purchase access to the system. Or if they're perfectly comfortable open sourcing their code, then they can link to their open source code project and we'll renew that free minute every month. Wow, so it's a, it's a really good way for everybody, for anybody who does want to get into that at probably both from an educational standpoint, getting used to it, trying it out, seeing what works, what doesn't work, and then also perhaps further down the line, applications that you could. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's kind of amazing that this sort of access is being provided by companies like D-Wave. Uh, this is still technology that's really advanced. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, like you can see people starting to get in on learning how to program for it. Um, it's sort of wild because there's not, like, most programmers are not going to be able to directly access a quantum computer right now. Um, but I guess that's part of the point because, you know, as someone that's making quantum computers, you want to make sure that there is a base of programmers. Right, there's people that there. So when, when the hardware is, as the hardware gets available, like, you want to make sure people know how to use it. Yeah, I mean, every time that we've ever worked with a customer, we found that they've been able to push and develop the ability to program a quantum computer in new directions, and they've been able to help us make programming the quantum computers more efficient. So in the last eight years that we've been working with customers, they've developed 100 early applications on the quantum computer. In, in the very early, early days, that was a very heavy lift because you were programming in like the machine language for the quantum computer itself. But over that eight year period, we learned a lot of lessons about what were common paths that people attempted? What were the, the application examples that people tried that worked out well? You know, they, they were well-worn paths moving in the direction of looking at scheduling and logistics from an optimization standpoint, or looking at machine learning models they could run on the quantum computer, or doing material simulation. So we started to develop the tools to make that easier and, and more accessible for people. And really, we just need to get these in the hands of more smart people because it's, it's not about quantum devices or a single quantum computer, this is really going to become a new industry for our entire economy. And there's, there's um, so much more growth to happen in the software space than has ever occurred in the hardware space. It's, it's a very exciting time to, for people to start getting involved and, and learn about it. And, and one last point I'd mention is that part of the reason why I believe that quantum mechanics feels so weird to people is because we never get a chance to interact with it. Nothing in the world at our scale behaves quantum mechanically. And we designed a programmable quantum system so that people can actually interact with a quantum system and see like, oh, this is how it behaves. This is how it's reacting. You know, sometimes you're posing, you know, think about it as like when you're sending an instruction to the quantum computer, you're making like a little maze with cheese in it. And there's a little quantum mouse running through the maze for you. That's the quantum computer. Sometimes what you want is the cheese. You want the answer to your problem. You want to solve an application. But sometimes what you're trying to do is learn about the quantum mouse and developers on the quantum systems get to do a little bit of both. 
That is really exciting just to provide that, you know, kind of revolutionary technology to give people access to that, kind of what Matt was saying, you know, to actually be able to be able to access it. Um, uh, Murray, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Now, you did mention the website, and I just want to say it again. So it's dwavesys, S-Y-S dot com, correct? That's correct. Okay, so that's where people can go and try this out, sign up for an account. I was actually signing up for an account right before we... But I'm going to do some quantum programming. programming. <laughs> but I, I want to see it. I want hey, to see it. You know, you know, it's a budding, it's a budding field. Yeah, you could right. get right in on the ground floor. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Probably not going to work for me. Um, <laughs> my, my programming skills aren't there. But I still want to see it. You know, I still want to access it. And it's, it's really cool for everybody out there that, that does want to do that. So, Murray, thank you so much for hopping on DT Daily with us today. We appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.